We're talking about MIG settings today, and if you don't get your settings right with MIG welding, you don't have a chance of getting a good weld. So the principles we're gonna talk about here are really important, and I'm gonna lay it out to where it's gonna be simple for anybody to be able to dial in your settings. Now the advice you may have heard before, I know I've heard it since I started, is your weld should sound like frying bacon. It's like, well, that's fine, but how is that helpful? If they don't, what do you do? And if it does, you can still have a bad weld. I'll tell you that right now. You can be set far too cold and it'll sound like wonderful thick sliced country bacon. Let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm gonna set up here with some settings that are far too cold and weld on this quarter inch thick plate. Still sounds pretty good. No matter how it sounded, look at that cold lap on the bottom. It isn't tied in at all. And do I wanna drive behind you if this is on your trailer hitch? First of all, we need to understand some fundamentals about how the process works. We're talking about short circuit MIG welding, which is gonna be the most common that people will do. That's what gives the frying bacon sound. Now let me show you a slow motion clip that I got of the wire stubbing out and melting back. See, the arc isn't lit all the time. It actually shorts out, that's why it's called short circuit or short arc. It shorts out against the workpiece, then it burns back with an arc that creates some heat, but then it gets long enough that the arc goes out and that process repeats over and over and over again. And you might be wondering, why do you wanna do that? Don't you want the arc on all the time? Well, there is a variant of MIG welding where you have the arc on all the time, but that gets really hot. So there are a few advantages to running short circuit MIG like this. First of all, it limits the heat by creating kind of a natural pulse. And so this lets you weld on thinner material, it lets you weld vertical and overhead that you can't do if you have a spray transfer with the arc on all the time. It also makes it possible to weld on like a 115 volt outlet because you don't draw quite as much energy. Now this is important to understand because that's what gives that frying bacon sound. It's having the short circuit process running right. And that means that you have the right ratio between your wire feed speed and your voltage knob. Now the thing that just about everybody I talk to gets backwards and it'll really mess you up and have you chasing your tail is thinking that the wire feed speed just adds material and the voltage knob just adds heat. Well, the reality is the uh, MIG welding process is done with what's called a constant voltage power supply. So when you turn up your wire feed speed, the power supply automatically cranks up your amperage to add more heat in and maintain the same voltage. What this means is that the wire feed speed is the main variable to control your heat. Let's take another look at that quarter inch thick T-joint that uh, I welded earlier and see how we might correct this issue where it's too cold. Now most beginners that I'd work with would say that that needs more voltage because it looks cold, but most would also say it needs less wire feed speed because of the way that it's built up. In fact, you need to go the opposite direction on wire feed speed and give it more wire, much more wire feed speed because that's gonna increase your amperage and cause it to penetrate down in through that mill scale. Now it would have been better to remove the mill scale altogether, but that wouldn't have solved the problem in this case. You still would have had a lot of lack of fusion with the settings as cold as they were. So where do you get a good wire feed speed? Well, if you have a good quality machine, the chart is actually gonna get you in the ballpark. Or you can calculate it, but since nobody wants to watch me do math here on the screen, I went ahead and calculated a few for you on this chart. You can grab a screenshot. Now you might be wondering if the wire feed speed controls how much heat goes in by changing your amperage and also how much material is added, what's the point of the voltage knob at all? Well, this is where we go back to the short circuit physics and that frying bacon sound. You need to have the voltage knob in a range that will give you that short circuit transfer efficiently. See, if it's down too low, you won't melt back far enough and it'll just stub out and it'll kind of sound like a machine gun. Sound like this. Now, if you turn it up too high, it's gonna burn back too far and it actually sounds similar to that. So a good exercise for everybody to run when you're learning welding, you should do this if you've never done it before, even if you've been welding for a while, just get a plate, 
Set your machine with the right wire feed speed for that thickness. I'm gonna use 300 inches per minute for one eighth inch thick material. Now I'm gonna turn my voltage down. I know that 18 volts runs about right for this, but I'm gonna turn it clear down to 14 and then run a bead and I'll turn it up every two volts till I get clear up to 22. Let's go ahead and try that. Now you can see that when it's too low, you're not really getting an efficient transfer. It's kind of stubbing out and it's burning back too far when your voltage is up too high. So it's kind of like a carburetor. You know, you can turn your screw in and then you lean it out till it kind of pop, pop, pop. And then you turn it out till it richens and it kind of pop, pop, pop and go somewhere in the middle. It's the same thing to get that efficient short circuit transfer mode. Now there's a pretty wide range in which you actually get a good short circuit transfer. And here's where you can really fine tune your process. And in this case, the voltage will control your arc length or kind of the average arc length. And what that does is it'll spread out your weld with a higher voltage. So if your weld is really crowned up, kind of like a peak, it's very convex and you wanna flatten it out, turn up your voltage a little bit, it'll spread things out and you'll get a flatter or a little bit more concave weld. And likewise, if you want it to peak up a little bit higher, then you can turn it down a little bit. And so that's what that voltage will do to your weld bead. Now, if you find that it's overall too cold or too hot, you can adjust your wire feed speed and then dial in your voltage again. And if you are just beginning, don't mistake a technique issue for a settings one, because if you aren't holding a good consistent stick out, consistent angles and consistent travel speed, it doesn't matter what your settings are gonna be. And that's what I teach in my online courses. You can find them linked in the description if you are just getting started. I keep them as affordable as possible to help you get going really quickly on your own time. And if you wanna learn more about the short circuit transfer mode and the different types of MIG welding that there are, check out this video right here.